Hi there, this is Lady Shell. I thought I would do a short tutorial on setting up a one shot for play. Now I'm not gonna do the entire setting up. I'm just going to set up the first encounter and uh, talk about some of the things that you'll want to remember to do before your players get on the table. Now, as you can see, the adventure that I'm using is a pre-published one. It is not something that I made up, although I have added a few things of my own to this. This is called Journey on the Long Road. It is written by Dave Zajic, and it is from Swordfin Games. I got it from the DMs Guild. It's actually part of a bundle with three other adventures that are all in the same realm of, uh, it's a Dwarven party and it is four different stories. Three of them are created into mods and one of them is just a PDF that you could create into a mod for your own use if you wanted. But uh, they're all for lower level. This particular adventure is for a level two party of five and all the characters in all of these stories are dwarves. So it's pretty cool because I like dwarves. So we're going to start with our story entry and I need to adjust my map here because I'm trying to drag the map over. There we go. What I've done is I've got a table set up and this is done this way so that everything fits on the table in a certain location and everything will stack on top of each other. Now I have five of my characters on the combat tracker. I don't have anybody on my table, but I have six pregens and I've just randomly chosen five of them to start here. And I've set up their character sheets right here. They're all on top of each other so that I can easily access them by clicking on the shield for the person. Let's go back to the first tab. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. This tab here is where I'm gonna fit all of my story entries. And we have our little introduction. It says the second level adventure for a party of five dwarven adventurers. And you do not have to run this as a Dwarven adventure, if you want to change it to other races, you can. I chose to keep with the Dwarven theme because it's easier that way. And I like Dwarves. So anyway, it takes place in Narfell. It's a wintry country covered in infertile soil and scraggly grass. Glaciers on Mount Inar reach down from the peak and into the plains. Isolus Lake is frozen nearly year-round. Bitter, killing winds blow increasingly. So anyway, the story goes where you have this party. They have just come back from selling some mead to a city that was to the west on this map. And they are heading to the east and they reach this giant spire gap. Now we're going to go to the next page and here we have our intro. I'm not going to read all of this, but it says you were, your trip was a success, but your pony got victim to a dire wolf attack. So now you guys are walking. They were on a wagon. Now they're walking. Because of this, these weather conditions, what you do is you start out by doing a constitution saving throw. And what I'm gonna do is I have everybody on the party sheet. And as the DM, I do a constitution saving throw without the party knowing it, cause it's gonna be random. So let's uh, ro roll this for everybody and see who passes and who doesn't. If you needed to meet a 10, we have, uh, Oh, poor Candace Silver Shield failed, as did our Barbarian. So what happens to them when they fail, it says they receive a level of exhaustion. And the penalty for level one exhaustion is disadvantage on ability checks. So I have a module that is from Rob Tui. It's called Conditions and Effects. Purchased it from the DM skill. I'm going to open up the effects and I'm going to scroll down to exhaustion. And I will put level one exhaustion on 
Candace Silver Shield, and Brock Hammerstone. So now these guys are going to have disadvantage on ability checks. So let me close that back up. And then I would put all my characters on this map because it's going to start on this map. You're in the foothills, you come up to this gap, and all of a sudden you see that the road forks. And you're heading towards Peltarch. This village, no matter how small, promises a welcome respite from the weeks you have spent traveling on the long road. So we already did a, the Constitution saving throw, and I'm not going to play this out. I just want to show you the things that you would do when you first started. One of the things that I definitely do is I will go through each of my different flags, and as you can see, I have the group set to Journey on the Long Road. So the only things that are going to show in here are the things from Journey on the Long Road. Like if I have any tables, I will look for that. No, I don't have any tables. Story is there. Quests are here. NPCs, I have that set. The encounters, I have that set. The items. Oh, I've made a bunch of different items because I wanted to make something a little special in the inn when they finally get to town that they can buy different types of food and stuff. So I made some fun little items. And then we have our parcels. Let's set that up. And as you can see, I do have two uh, groups here. The first one is the one that comes with the module and the second one that's called Journey on the Long Road Extras is the one where I made my custom items or custom parcels or custom whatever. So done loading a map. We're going to continue on here with the story. So it says that you get up here and I'm going to let's put our party on the map just for demonstration sake and I will have the barbarian in the front and the fighter will be up front also and the rogue is going to be towards the back and the bard is going to be towards the back also. Now it says here that there there's a tribe of hobgoblins that have the right to demand a toll per se to cross here. However, the hobgoblins that the party is going to meet are not part of that tribe. They are pretending to be part of the tribe. So we have this encounter, which as you see, I have pins up here. This pin is to my treasure parcel. This pin is to my story entry down here. I think that's a story entry. One of these is the story entry and one of them is the encounter. And then this little pin here is a perception check because when my party comes around the corner, we want to see if anyone is perception has good, uh, is perceptive enough to realize that the uh, road is being blocked by these hobgoblins. So, the person in the front is Brock Hammerstone, the fighter. So we're going to open his sheet. We're going to pull up the skills tab and we're, he's going to do a perception check in the tower. So um, he rolls at disadvantage. Why did he roll at disadvantage? Oh, because he has exhaustion. So uh, yeah, he's, he didn't see anything with a, with a three. <laughs> Not very good. And that's because of his exhaustion. I bet he would pass it easily if he was not so exhausted. So when they get up here, the hobgoblins are going to be on the map here. So let's put them on the map. This is where they're blocking. And this is the leader. And he's sitting on top of a dire wolf. So these guys don't see that. They're just going to come uh, barreling along or, or more like... Uh, gently walking because remember they're they've been walking for quite a, a while and the weather is bad and two of the f 
five people are exhausted. So I'm going to reveal some more of the map. A little bit more. Okay, so as they get closer, oh, they're finally going to see these guys. Okay, let me reveal them all. I could do that by clicking on the eye. Now they are all revealed. Now uh, our party comes around the corner and oh wow, they are going to be in some trouble here. They see that uh, there are some hobgoblins blocking the way. And it talks about exhaustion, and we're going to continue on here. It says that these guys are exiled from the Razorheart clan, which is the clan that is allowed to, t to take money for a toll. So they're pretending to be members of this clan. Everybody knows that they are allowed to do this. However, these guys are not, you know, who they say they are. Now, will our party figure this out? Well, who knows? We've got the encounter loaded and they're asking for 50 gold. You could either pay the gold or you can try and fight them. And you probably should kind of think about this because remember, you are level two. There are only five of you. And there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus the leader, plus the dire wolf. And these guys are not easy people to fight against. So let me just put one of them up here so we can look and see what he's all about. And as a DM, I would load all of my NPCs and stack them right on top of here. And you access everything by clicking on the shield. So anyway, the party has to do checks to see what the heck should we do? And if they do a wisdom check, they need they only need a DC5 wisdom to see that the hobgoblins appear to be disciplined warriors. Now I could do a check myself and see what kind of uh, thing we're going to get. So let's uh, do wisdom. We're going to do a group check here. So I've got a wisdom, I got a couple intelligence, another wisdom. I don't think anybody's going to get a DC 20. So let's go with uh, let's go with the history intelligence check. So we will try for a DC 10. So let's see if they can make it DC 10. I'm going to roll. It's invisible. They can't see. And let's see. Remember, the people that have exhaustion have disadvantage on their ability check. So uh, that's probably the two people that failed here. Yep, Brock Hammerstone. Was he one of the ones? Yep, Brock, it was Brock Hammerstone and Candace Silvershield. So we've got Brock did not pass. And uh, Gabby, Gareth, and Finn did succeed. Just because the two failed. We have three that passed, so I'm going to allow them to get the information from the DC-10 history check, which tells them from your time in tomorrow, you remember hearing the Razorheart clan through the scheming of its queen, the hobgoblin Maqua, has ties with Damara and a right to tax the giant spire gap. So they have to decide, okay, we know that they have the right to tax, but should we pay the 50 or should we not? I was curious how much uh, money they had between them. So let's look by this way. I will look down here. We've got 10 gold from Brock. We have 15, so that's 25. Thirty-five. Fifty. Sixty. 
60. So all between them, they have 60 gold. These guys want 50 gold. So after we go through all this stuff, it says, see, Uthak does not know that the Razor, Hand clan, Razor Heart clan only charges 25. So when he said 50, his lawful alignment makes him adverse to lying. So if they mention the cost discrepancy, he smiles and agrees to check to accept 25. However, to know that, you would have to have a DC 15 history check. And did anybody get 15? We got one person got only one. Oh no, two people got 15. But out of five people, I don't know. So you get, you know, if they possibly knew this, they might say that, and then he would take 25, and then he would go away. Now, if they try and fight, they're probably all going to die. But it says here, tactics, that Urthok would rather not fight. But if, he, if they refuse to pay or attack first, he orders his men to take up arms. He knows the killing travelers on the road will only bring unwanted attention from Damara and the Razorheart clan, and Narfil. So he doesn't want to like leave evidence behind. So what happens is if the soldiers do fight it, fight them instead of killing them, they will leave, they will leave them here. They will take all their stuff except their armor. So they'll be lying here in the snow with only armor, no food, no water, no weapons. And, you know, that's pretty tough because they still have to get to the next town. However, what I did was I decided, you know, that's pretty harsh to leave them there with nothing. So I made this extra, where did I put it? Here it is. I made an additional treasure. This is some crappy stuff that the... <laughs> The hobgoblins left behind. See, they left a ripped backpack and a poor quality, couple poor quality daggers and some bent javelins and some rusty short swords and some half burned torches and a leaky water skin. So, you know, I mean, at least it's something. They may not have the best weapons, but they have a little bit. Notice no food was left behind. So, you know, these guys better get to town faster. They're going to end up with no food. And remember, two people are also exhausted. So, that's what I'm going to do. That was my additional thing. And then there is experience here where it shows you, uh, depending on what you did, you would get an experience reward. I don't think you're going to get any experience reward if you get knocked unconscious by the hobgoblins and don't end up with anything. So anyway, this is the beginning of this adventure. It's a lot of fun. And I am looking forward to actually hosting it. And... I hope you found this interesting and informative. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And thanks a lot for watching. Bye.